Hi, I'm uh, Matthew Adams. I'm a uh, cloud graphics developer, and with me is John Pacey, the manager of the Cloud Notebooks team. And we'll be giving you an overview of the current state of graphics in the cloud. First, a uh, brief bit of background of uh, Wolfram Lakeridge graphics in general. Uh, for many people, uh, their first introduction to Wolfram Language Graphics, or maybe only exposure to it, is through all our uh, mathematical and scientific visualization functions, um, plot, contour plot, bar chart, etc. But underpinning all of this is a uh, rich, uh, powerful, general purpose graphics language. Um, so you have all these core building blocks, you know, something as simple as red rectangle, mix red rectangle. And uh, building up from that, uh, you get all of the cool graphics you see in Wolfram Language, both in 2D and in 3D. And you can uh, make any kind of graphic you want out of this. Um, here's a little self-indulgent slide of uh, some Wolfram Language doodles I've made. There, uh, There's a bunch of cool artwork you can find out there on the community forums and, uh, and elsewhere online. So our challenge is how do we implement all of this in cloud? How do we bring graphics to cloud? I'm pleased to say I've solved that. This uh, here is how you make a cloud graphic. Just evaluate this and it works, cloud graphic. Actually to uh, understand how this all works, we should take a peek under the hood of what desktop is doing. Um, so on desktop, when you evaluate a graphics expression, whether something simple like graphics disk here or um, more complicated like a contour plot or something, uh, you, you enter that into the desktop front end, it passes that expression along to the kernel, and the kernel produces a box expression. In this case, it's a fairly simple graphics box, disk box, and the front end takes that and draws from this box expression. So then you get your final graphic output. So in cloud, we took that and we plopped it on the server. So if you evaluate it, uh, graphics disk again, same example, evaluate it in the browser, the browser sends it back over to the server, which uh, coordinates the same kernel, same desktop front end running on the cloud. So it sends the expression to the kernel that creates a graphics box. The server then passes that graphics box along to the server side desktop front end. That produces some helper data, either a, a bitmap, a raster image, or more commonly, a, um, a internal JSON format that fully specifies the image. So this desktop front end is rendering and drawing, but instead of the output being a, uh, a an image like it is on desktop, it is rendering to this, this JSON format. And that helper data then gets passed onto the browser. The browser knows how to draw from the helper data. It fully specifies the image, um, absolute coordinates for everything. We uh, call this uh, system helper data graphics um, and it was, really useful, enabled us to quickly bring Wolfram graphics to the cloud. Hey, Matt, and Matt, uh, sorry yeah. to interrupt, but if you want to go back a few slides, I think there was a technical difficulty there uh, where it lag a bit. So I think we missed the uh, your your diagram from the cloud. Uh, missed cloud this program. diagram? Yep. Mm -hmm. Let's go ahead. Interesting. All right. Um, and I'll... just so people know, uh, for the technical difficulties, we'll make sure that we re-record this and post that up later, just in case we run into that again. But uh, thanks for letting us know about that. Sorry. Go ahead, Matt. Weird. Sorry about that. Um, yep. While I'm at it, I'll move the Zoom bar out of the way. All right. Um, yeah, so going back one more step, here's the flow and desktop. Uh, for cloud, we brought this and uh, plopped it on the server side. So you uh, evaluate your graphic um, in the browser. That expression gets sent along to the server. And that gets passed to the kernel. Same kernels on desktop. That uh, creates a graphics box. Same idea. 
server passes that graphics box onto a desktop front end running on the on the server side and that front end renders out the graphic um, but instead of rendering it to um, using the system drawing functionality uh, like on desktop it renders it to either a bitmap or to uh, internal format json um, that fully specifies the graphic and this is this helper data um, fully describes the graphic. So that helper data then gets passed onto the browser, and uh, the browser renders from the helper data. Helper data graphics uh, was was great. It enabled us to quickly bring Wolfram graphics to the cloud because um, the front end is doing the heavy lifting of converting the graphics box to um, something that we can render from. And it continues to be very effective for many use cases. Uh, in fact, most graphics you see in cloud are still powered this way and uh, works great. But it does have a, a few limitations. One is dynamics inside of the graphic uh, don't work. So if you need a dynamic graphic, you can always wrap dynamic around the entire graphic. Um, and that'll work, but inside doesn't work. A, uh, another challenge is just complexity of the system. There's a lot of moving parts, uh, the server coordinating between the kernel, the front end, the client side, making sure that they're all in sync and interacting appropriately is, is a challenge. Um, there's also front end dependent interactions, particularly manually resizing a graphic. Um, since we don't have a, a front end client side, when you're resizing, you the, the client has to guess what the best way to redraw the graphic is until you release the resize, and it can go back to the server and fetch an update. Um, so in some cases, that doesn't quite match desktop, and uh, speed can also be an issue. Regarding speed, there's a, a larger story here. We really want to deliver uh, as fast as possible manipulates to cloud. And the challenge is that going this big jump back and forth to the server every time uh, can be slow, particularly if you're on spotty connection, um, if you're far away from the server. Um, just to illustrate that, here's a uh, manipulate. This would work the same on desktop. It's just illustration purposes. Um, as I increase the frequency of the sine wave, you can see numbers popping up the bottom. Each of these numbers represents a trip um, back to the server, back to the kernel, to the front end, to the server, back to the client um, to get a new updated graphic. So you can see how that's a, that's a lot of work to, to render all these updates, um, even just scrubbing a little bit in the graphic in the manipulate. So to fix this, we have to eliminate all those trips to the server. Uh, one part of the solution is compiling the manipulate. Um, and this essentially takes the kernel piece and brings it down to the browser. So instead of uh, using relying on the server to convert from an expression like graphics disk or plot or something to the actual graphics box that we render, we can do that client side. Unfortunately, for helper data graphics, we still need the server side desktop front end to generate helper data so we can actually render something. So this plus the uh, other limitations led us to thinking we need to eliminate the server side front end. So then the general flow becomes this. Evaluate your expression. It gets sent onto the server to the kernel, generates the graphics box, and then that same graphics box is passed unchanged to the browser. And uh, we need to make a system on the browser that works just like the desktop front end and renders directly from the box expression. We're calling this system native graphics because uh, the graphic is rendered natively client side and browser. And uh, we are going full steam ahead with it. There are, of course, a few challenges to implementing this. Um, there's always browser uh, inconsistencies and limitations. In cloud notebooks in general, uh, and particularly in graphics, we're always uh, 
pushing the limits of what browsers are designed to do. Um, and so uh, always have to work around that. Um, there's also the, just the sheer power flexibility of the Wolfram, Wolfram language spec. Um, people have been ad adding stuff to graphics since 1988, so longer than I've been alive. And uh, uh, all those interactions have to work, work perfectly. All the, all the different uh, parts have to work perfectly together. Um, but we really think this is worth it. And I say we're, we're going full student ahead with this. Uh, a few of the benefits. Uh, Native graphics does bring us dynamic, oops, does bring us dynamic inside the graphic. So here's an example with hue. See, I drag, change the line color. Um, for example, with the line endpoint. This graphic is being rendered natively. I just put a bunch of points in the background to show that it's performant. Also gives us full accurate uh, image dimension positioning calculations. Um, here's a, a, a sort of pathological example for helpful data. You're unlikely to run into something in the wild that's, that's this uh, wonky, but uh, just for illustration purposes, um, you see when I resize this graphic, when I release the cursor, the disk pops to a new size. This is because while I'm resize, this because the disk is supposed to maintain the same size while you're resizing. But with helper data, we don't know that client side. You have to go back to the server side front end to render it out to know for sure. And so then this just uh, just works with native graphics. Smooth resizing. Uh, I'm proud to say this works for all, um, all, all cases. Uh, even here's a, a fairly pathological one that doesn't maybe doesn't look like it on the surface. But as I resize this graphic, you see the uh, red dot gets closer to the edge. And once it hits, then continuing to resize changes the aspect ratio of the graphic. And this uh, behavior per, uh, exactly matches desktop. Native graphics also gives us full integration with the rest of the cloud notebook. This is particularly important with inset. Excuse me. Particularly important with inset, which we're currently implementing, um, whether uh, by design or not, if something is slightly different in cloud rendering or has slightly different dimensions than desktop, uh, with native graphics, the graphic can adjust to that. Native graphics also gives us uh, pink box error messages. It's a, it's a little thing, but uh, something I appreciate because I author, author a lot of graphics in the cloud. So hover over, you get the error message. So uh, this disk is, cannot have a center coordinate of foo because that doesn't make any sense. And uh, ultimately, uh, native graphics just has fewer moving parts, and that means fewer bugs. Um, it's still a, a complex system, but the complexity is contained inside the browser. It's just a, a big system to take a graphics box, turn it into a graphical output. None of this coordinating server-side front ends and such. So the current state here, support is being added incrementally. Currently, we have the foundational algorithms implemented, most of the directives and uh, several primitives. And our primary goal right now is to get support as quickly as possible for plot, list plot, list line plot, et cetera. I'll give you a, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, a uh, quick sneak peek um, at an experimental function here that uh, does not, uh, it's not live in cloud yet, but, uh, but will be soon. This check native support function. Do a normal uh, function syntax here. We'll tell you whether a graphic is uh, supported natively. So graphics disk, this example I keep using, is supported. Um, here's an example I stole from the B spline curve documentation. Evaluate that. It'll show you it's not supported because B spline curve box is not yet supported native graphics. So you can use this if you're if you're getting deep in the weeds on this stuff, to maybe tweak your graphic, uh, maybe find a workaround for your graphic, and you have an option that is uh, not supported, um, but you're not really using it. It's it's not actually changing the output visually of the graphic. You could drop that to get support, or you can use that to uh, let us know things that you particularly want support to be added for. Now I'll switch gears for a second here to uh, experimental. Uh, 
cloud graphics features. These are all is a experimental subject to change um, only in cloud right now. Just sort of a sneak peek of uh, what's coming. One is uh, zooming and panning. I can click on this graphic, drag to zoom, you can pan around. It uh, does what you would expect. Um, this, this is a native graphic. Uh, it also works for help data. So I can zoom in on the detail of this plot, see the higher frequency information. Um, this is helper data. So you see when I scroll after, or excuse me, when I pan after I release the cursor, uh, then the data fills in. I should note that this is only a graphics level zoom. So see if I pan past the end of the plot here, there's not additional data. It doesn't recompute the plot. It just, uh, it's like if the plot was on a piece of paper and you held that closer to your face to look at more detail. Uh, so still a really powerful feature, but it's not, it's not uh, recomputing your graphic. Another related feature is uh, interactive graphics. Um, this is a client side, um, highly efficient framework for uh, doing interactions. It's no, uh, no dynamics. It's uh, to say all client side, so I can scroll over this plot and you see the point just follows right along with my mouse. Um, gives us uh, highlighting individual points, good drop lines, another one, both point plots and for uh, list plots here. And there's a few other features. I can select a set of points, highlight a set of points. And uh, we're working right now to expose this at the Wolfram language level. Uh, another handy one is using uh, web URLs directly to embed images as you would on a um, on a regular website. So here, if I evaluate this, take a second, we get our lovely GIF of Stephen, or GIF, if you will, <laughs> of uh, Stephen walking on a treadmill. And this is fully computable, so if I want to see... Uh, I want to see what it would look like to have an army of Stephen clones working out of the gym. I can do that. So uh, yeah, there's also you know actual useful reasons to use this. All right, and uh, now I'll turn it over to John Pacey to talk about 3D. Yeah, sure. Uh, go ahead and do some uh, sharing here. Uh, and Jesse, that's a great question, which uh, I'll make sure to answer when we get to the uh, uh, question, um, question answer portion after my, my short uh, talk about 3D graphics here. So make sure you remind me to uh, ask that question again. Um, so I'm John Pacey. Uh, I'm, I manage the Cloud Notebooks team. And also in particular, uh, I'm one of the main developers for graphics, uh, specifically graphics, th uh, 3D, gra 3D graphics. So Matt was talking more about 2D graphics. Um, and so a brief, brief history of 3D graphics in terms of the cloud. So this was uh, basically our first foray into implementing graphics purely on the client side. And one of the first boxes to actually, uh, we actually tried to implement, but that had sort of a model on the client side and try to render. And that was way back when I started at Wolfram, way back in 2011. Um, and so uh, we learned a lot from that. Uh, and the primary thing that we learned from that was that it was definitely possible to do graphics natively on the client side, uh, but, but we have a lot of uh, uh, things to get through to get there. Um, and all the things that Matt just talked about previously for 2D, uh, including helper data graphics and the more robust sort of native graphics framework was based on that initial, initial work. Um, and so, you know, sort of, sort of what happened and where are we at? Um, well, uh, that after that initial work with 3D, we, we focused on 2D, and that's where you, you saw most of our time uh, in the past various stages of cloud development have been working with helper data graphics and also you know, moving back into native graphics, trying to handle things purely on the client. And one of the themes uh, that sort of Matt was talking about and that I'll talk to as well is we're balancing a lot of these different um, constraints in, ter in, ter in how we're going to implement this, whether it's just performance, uh, and just complexity of some of the code and, and ease of maintenance. Um, 
anyway, it's back to, to, the, to the 3D details for the current implementation. So it's another hybrid approach. Um, so initially it'll render a static image and then you transition into a uh, client side uh, web gel implementation during interaction. Uh, and then once you're done with that interaction, we'll go, we go back to the server and, and get an updated image. So again, we're still tied to the server, but uh, most of the work is still be doing pure, pure client side in JavaScript and in, in particular WebGL. It also has limitations. Um, and so the main one was that the uh, current WebGL implementation is not complete. Uh, you know, don't, I don't support all primitives in that. Uh, yeah, could be, yeah, thank you. How about now? Sorry, somebody asked about uh, blocking out my slides. One Zoom overlay was, was doing that. So uh, didn't, hopefully didn't miss much. Okay, so limitations of the existing WebGL implementation, it's, it's mainly not complete. Uh, the general approach there is to render as much of the 3D scene as it, as it can. So if there's any you know, primitives that aren't supported, it'll just you know, uh, uh, sort of skip those. And most options uh, are assumed to have default values. And if it encounters any kind of sort of limitation on the client side in terms of memory usage, it'll just you know, stop drawing primitives. Uh, because again, the, the goal there is we want to try to render the 3D as best as possible, but we don't want to crash the whole page just trying to render it. So there's some, some uh, difficulties there in bouncing that. Uh, and as I said, we still rely on the server side front end for generating those, those images, the initial rendering and then, then updates. And since we're running these on sort of uh, VMs, uh, where we're, that's all being done in software rasterization. So that sort of caps some of your performance on, on some of that. Uh, and one of the bigger ones and sort of gets into just the whole graphics language in general. So it's a lot of effort to keep that, that uh, completely separate implementation you know, uh, up to date with the desktop front end bug fixu fixes and feature changes. And that was you know, also one of the reasons why we, we, we did sort of help with data graphics for 2D was for you know, speed and, and how, how fast we could get something to the, to the browser. Um, anyway, so I'll show you a couple examples of how this works. So again, this is an initial image. And then when I go ahead and click and drag on it, uh, it sort of tries to seamlessly transition to uh, WebGL. And you'll notice some inconsistent inconsistencies there with dashing. And then when you're done, uh, it'll update uh, from the server with a uh, with a new image. And since this graphic is fairly uh, simple, it's pretty pretty snappy. Uh, and so again, one of the things I also want to uh, show here is that uh, for the things that we support, uh, this very very closely and you know basically identically matches desktop, including including some bugs there that we found for the desktop team. Um, just a few more examples here, just to show uh, the different things that are actually supported. Uh, and then the last one, which is a bit more complicated. Here. Oops. Yeah, there we go. Sorry. So this is a this is a case where the graphics is a bit more complicated and, and there's a bit more back and forth from the server getting the updated uh, image there. Okay. Um, so where are we going with 3D? Um, so we're we're basically doing a new implementation of 3D. Uh, yeah, to so that we can have this be better supported overall uh, and generally just a, a better implementation longer term. So again, for for the you know, vast majority of the last few years, our focus has been on 2D graphics, uh, as that's more used more often. Um, but we're getting back into uh, making a concerted effort to improve 3D. Uh, and again, part of it is generally about what's the right approach here to make it maintainable. And so there's a few avenues here. Um, one of them is working with the desktop front end for having an actual, you know, compiled WASM library. So that means compiling some of the front end C code that's related to graphics and the core graphics uh, you know, uh, algorithm, uh, compiling that into a library that we can use. So that, that is an advantage into making it maintainable. Uh, and that's, that's made possible by a lot of, by a lot of sort of uh, under the hood changes in general modernization of the front end C code in the past you know, five plus years. So that's something that I'm actively working on with the desktop front end team. And so that's, that's one approach. 
uh, uh, another approach is to, you know, more or less build out on top of the native graphics framework that Matt was talking about. That that core underlying framework is is shared with 3D. It would just be a matter of implementing, uh, re-implementing the 3D primitives on top of that. And so these are our sort of longer term development uh, ideas, um, just because it's just a lot of code to to implement and, and maintain. Uh, but we do have that that plan uh, and that works, and we sort of you know. As we incrementally improve that, you'll, you'll switch from sort of the uh, existing sort of helper data or server side based things into pure client side and make the right choice based off of performance. Uh, in the shorter term, there is some interest and some experiments in sort of standalone uh, 3D viewers. And what I mean by that is to utilize existing JavaScript frameworks uh, that can render various 3D file formats. So think if you're aware of these, think of things like 3JS or Babylon.js uh, that provide uh, you know, WebGL-based renderers where you can just more or less feed it a uh, file format. And, and that format can be as complicated as, uh, it can be your, your simple old OBJ files. It can be the newer formats, such as GLSL, which include shading and other things like that. Um, so the caveat here is that that would not match the, the desktop rendering of graphics 3D. Um, but but it's actually quite useful uh, for other uh, other things in Wolfram JavaScript libraries and in, in particular for Wolfram Alpha, and it gives you a much you know richer experience of of being able to utilize uh, uh, WebGL in, in in the cloud. Um, so to uh, conclude here and sort of uh, give you a summary before we hop into Q and A. So state of graphics in the cloud. Uh, for 2D, the native, native graphics approach is well under underway. Again, we're prioritizing plot this plot, um, and this gives us just overall better uh, behavior and performance. And with the goal of having fast manipulate, uh, the helper data graphics on the 2D end is is continue to be improved. And again, the focus there is on just performance improvements because eventually native graphics will replace that pretty much, pretty much uh, uh, entirely. Uh, we kind of showed some experimental features that are in progress, and, and most of that just needs additional documentation on our end and, and how to incorporate that directly into the Wolfram language. Uh, and as far as 3D graphics, we haven't forgotten about it. Uh, we're definitely putting more effort in there. It's a bit uh, more of a longer term plan, but there is some shorter term uh, experiments that, that hopefully are successful. So you have a little bit better experience for sort of standalone web viewers, if that ends up being um, useful to your, to your use case. Um, all right, so I guess uh, questions. Uh, so one of the, the first questions that I'll answer, so Jesse had asked this earlier in the, in the chat, so Jesse Freeman, and his question was, what has been the most difficult feature or property of desktop graphics to port to the cloud? Um, and he says, let's exclude making dy dynamics work client side, which sounds tremendously hard. So actually, Jesse, making dynamics work, work on the client side was easier. Um, uh, and that is actually generally done in, in cloud notebooks, we support dynamics. Um, and so the, the challenge there is actually uh, making sure that all of the uh, other graphics code uh, can, can do the core graphics algorithm. Uh, and so, uh, so the, the biggest challenge was just uh, replicating the sheer amount of code that it takes to more or less uh, place graphics exactly how Mathematica does in terms of uh, dealing with the coordinate system and uh, uh, scaling and sizing, that, that's it. Um, so if, if you don't care about the look and feel of, of Mathematica graphics, uh, the overall you know, project to try to implement that in the cloud would be on the order of a few months. Um, but you know, once, you, once you wanna have this exact look and feel of, math, of Mathematica, it's just a lot of uh, code that's been around for a while that, that we needed to replicate. So the, the I guess to summarize, the, the hardest part is just matching the look and feel of, of Mathematica graphics in terms of coordinate systems and sizing. Uh, mm -hmm. Let's see, uh, the next sort of question that we had in the chat that I'll go ahead and take uh, is that uh, mm -hmm. uh, another one from Jesse. So sort of follow up on that, is the new physically based rendering functionality supported in the cloud? The answer is no, not yet. Uh, so, uh, assuming we get there into the longer term approach, 
uh, we definitely can support it. It's just a matter of us getting to getting there. Okay. And then I think another sort of 3D specific Got, question. Uh, Jan raising his hand here. Oh, missed that. Oh, a lot of talk. There we go. Uh, Hello, can you hear me? Yes. Go ahead. Cool. Yep. Yep. Just, just one little amendment. I'm not sure, Jesse, how you meant it with you know client side dynamics. Uh, in in general, of course, dynamics work in cloud notebooks, and we we have all the framework for for notebooks already that we can just reuse in graphics. So that's why there's no particular challenge in graphics for that. Um, but if you mean sort of client side evaluation of the whole dynamic without going to the kernel, that's still a longer term project as well, right? Just to to clarify that also what Matt, Matt mentioned in terms of compiling uh, Wolfram language code to WebAssembly and then run it in the browser. We're working towards that using the, the modern Wolfram language compiler, uh, but that's not something that really exists yet for, for production use. Mm -hmm. yeah, Sorry. No, 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 that's a really good follow-up to just question. Mm -hmm. And uh, one more thing, maybe some, some dynamics, they do run on their clients. And maybe we should also mention that we do have a client side evaluator of expressions. That's also a pretty useful thing, uh, but it does not support sort of general uh, Wolfram language code, but, but certain things can run very efficiently on the client side. Mm -hmm. okay. uh, let's, see. let's go with uh, Richard. Uh, you had had a yeah. I raised my hand. Mm -hmm. um, roughly, how long, if ever, do you think it'll be uh, in years before um, the cloud will run and manipulate more or less the same as the desktop? It's a good question, um, John. You want to take that one too? Uh, sure. Can you still hear me? Yep. Okay. Oh, yeah. Um, I mean, there's there's always going to be the challenge in terms of the latency between client and server. So I think the the only way to to achieve that exact same performance is if it can run entirely on the client side. So that is basically. Uh, compiling the code and then running it directly in the browser. Um, I think for, for, for that to work in general, it's going to be tricky for some things that might never work, to be honest. Uh, you know, if, if you have arbitrary Wolfram language code that depends on other files on the server and, you know, there's, it's just not that everything can run on the client side. Uh, but for certain things like, let's say, manipulate of a plot, we might take that special case and specially optimize that and make that work sooner. Um, so it's, it's kind of a collaboration between the compiler effort and the, the cloud team. Uh, but, and yeah, I don't want to make, make any too specific promises, but I could imagine that next year we have something in that direction. And uh, maybe one more thing, if you, know, if you have specific cases that you care about, that would be good to know. Like if, if you tell us manipulate of plot, you don't care about that, but there's manipulate of something else that we should look into and that you really want optimized, then that would be good to know. Uh, Richard, I think you had another question or maybe a follow-up. Go ahead. Follow-up. Um, uh, Jan um, suggested that it would be good to know about uh, a specific need uh, that the, the team could work from. Um, should uh, I contact him or who should be contacted with, here's my need, can you help me with it? Uh, send us an email. Yep. Um, I don't know if you have my my email address. Uh, just send me something, uh, or come to the office hour. Like in when is it? Uh, one hour. Uh, hour and a half. One or hour and a half hour. Hour. Yeah. All right. 
office hours at three specifically. So we can talk uh, in depth if you want. Two, so half an hour. Oh, two. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thanks everybody for attending.